That, that's completely untrue, Stefan. Uh, the Liberal Party is going to be enacting legislation so that uh, a member of parliament can vote more freely and in the context of their own riding. Can you please describe that legislation? One moment, maybe someone should talk about it. Is there someone else that would like to speak? Say some, what, why you think you're a better representative than the other candidates, or why your party is the best choice to form a I prom. I'll, I'll fill in the lull here. One of the, the important things that the NDP is looking at is getting rid of the first past the post system, which we have now, where if you win 39.5% of the popular vote, you can get 54% of the seats. We're going to bring in proportional rep representation, and generally when you have proportional representation, that means Ottawa changes, because seldom will a party have a clear majority, and they're actually going to have to work together, as opposed to screaming at each other during question period. And I think that would be a very, very good change. Thank you. We plan on ending uh, partisanship and, and creating merit-based appointments in the Senate is one of them. Uh, and we are going to give, and this is coming right from our plan, greater independence to parliamentary committees. And we are going to make sure, uh, as I just said, that we will have... Uh, well, just as I said, we're going to create it so that Members of Parliament are more able to vote in context of what's important in their writing. It's that simple. Using, using the word simple as Jeff said, here are the simple facts, kids. Every political party represented here, wait, I'll, I'll get that in a second, the Liberal and the NDP, they both, the party leadership, has thrown out their members of parliament for disagreeing with party policy. End of story. I know, I was there. I was a member of parliament. I was a special advisor in the prime minister's office. Both of these gentlemen know it, I like them, but they both know that their party leadership dictates to the members of parliament what to say and how to vote. Now as far as the Green Party, I mean Elizabeth May, who I really like, she's a nice lady, she can't throw anybody else, anybody out unless she threw herself out because she's only a party of one. End of story. I mean, if you're the only person in your party, oh well they got one guy now because Malkir threw him out and now he's locked over he's with the Green Party. But at the end of the day, then you will do what the party leadership says. And as far as these promises of free votes and everything. Sorry kids, it's not on the table. When they get to be power, they want thumbs down, they want the little puppets, and that's the way the game is played down there. And it is not a democracy, it's a dictatorship of one. Whoever the party leader is, they control the entire agenda. Thank you. It seems that what Heck is suggesting is that every party leader is a control freak, like our current Prime Minister, who insists on scripting everything. The reality is that we can do politics differently. That's why I'm here in front of you to say politics can be different. That's why I'm supporting proportional representation. So there is no single individual who wants to pull the strings on all the uh, seated members. And the other thing is that this has been a gradually growing phenomenon, but democracy can be restored, and we're going to do it. We're going to do a number of measures. Everyone listens to the Auditor General. We're going to make sure that there's a science voice, no more muzzled scientists. We're going to make sure that the Parliamentary Budget Office gets all the information it needs and reports to you, not to, 
not, and Parliament, not to the party, reports to you exactly what is happening with the budget and whether or not an individual party's position is in fact true. We are looking at setting up those arms length standards that report directly to the public and not to the party. And I think that is absolutely critical. So, uh, now we have one minute. One minute concluding statements from me to the candidates. And the order will follow the speaking order from the introduction. So, Mr. Kluge will start and we'll just go down. Yes. Okay. October 19th, there's going to be a big decision made right here in Renfrew, Nipissing, Temple. You're going to have to vote for the person who you believe would best represent you on Parliament Hill. I may be a little biased, but I think it's this little bald-headed guy standing right in front of me. I believe that I am the one that would be your best representative because I can actually speak and vote on your behalf. Irrespective of what these three gentlemen say, don't worry, kids, they will do exactly, exactly what the party leader says. Now, Dan just mentioned that, but what Dan conveniently forgot was this fellow called Bruce Heyer last year, a federal member of the NDP, he disagreed with Tom Mulcair. Guess what? He got the boot. He's out. Now he's with the Green Party. And if he misbehaves over there, he'll probably get the boot too. So I'm already independent. They're not booting me out of anything because I don't want to be part of their crazy system where they order you to do. Wow, I heard them this time. So anyway, at the end of the day, kids, the decision has to be made who you believe would be your best representative there, and I believe it's me, or I wouldn't be here wasting your time listening to what I have to say. Thank you very much. To touch on the last uh, subject uh, quickly, uh, I promise that if I am elected, I will vote in favor of the Reform Act provisions for a secret ballot in the selection of uh, committee chairs and for a caucus uh, votes on the expulsion of members of, uh, from caucus and on a leadership review of party leaders. Uh, to conclude, I want, uh, I, there are many profound issues at, at stake in this election, from poverty to, to global warming to, to business income to uh, health care to, this, to this, the state of the uh, economy, and I'm, uh, I'm hoping that each of you will be as engaged as you uh, as, uh, as possibly can be, and I hope that this October will not only have an MP who is better than uh, the current one, but that we'll have the Democratic necessary for the next MP afterwards to be even better and the best yet. Yes, there are some things I will have to vote for, no matter what I think about it. But thankfully, they're really good things. They're in our party policy. And I would happily vote for a 7% middle class income tax cut like my party has put in our platform. I will happily vote in favor of a Canada Child Benefit, which will help alleviate the, the poverty of 21,000 children that live in our riding, that live below the poverty line. That's unacceptable. I will happily vote in favor of creating more jobs with infrastructure development that this riding so sorely needs. Thank you. I will keep my closing remarks short, as you are probably numb by now sitting on the floor. I have been a lawyer, and one of the hallmarks of a good lawyer is that you always do your research, that you try and present all issues in a measured and principled way. You anticipate what the arguments are for the other side. I have done this successfully throughout my career and I am willing to bring those skills and talents and a principled voice for Renfrew Nibis in September. Thank you very much. So I would like to thank our candidates for taking time to have their busy schedules to be with us today. And They've been invited to stay with us over the lunch period, so if you have any questions or just want to chat with them, I'm sure they'll be happy to chat with you. So,